What is up YouTube? That's here today. I'm back bringing you guys a VGC team building guide from scratch for the VGC 2023 regulation E format. I don't do these guides that often anymore, but I wanted to make a little guide showing you an insight into how I personally build my teams that I like to use on the higher end of the ladder and in tournaments, the three steps that I follow every single time that I build a team and how you guys can replicate this exact same strategy using any variety of Pokemon that you want to get the results that you want in a competitive setting. So that being said, what we're gonna do is actually, we're gonna be doing this uh, in a mixture of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and on Showdown. So we're gonna be using Showdown to look at a lot of the numbers, but we actually like to start off, believe it or not, in a Word document. This is the first thing that I always do whenever I build a team. And I ask myself one little question. What three things do I want this team to do? That sounds like a very, very simple question, but I feel like having a purpose when thinking about what you want your team to do is very, very important. Now you could say, I want this team to use uh, Arboliva, and that could be one of the things you want it to do, and that's completely fine, but being specific about what you want it to do can better help your mind categorize how to solve that problem. The three things I want this team to do, number one, is uh, have a good matchup. A good matchup versus Lando Heatran. So uh, when I'm building this team, I wanna actually, you know, add Pokemon that don't auto lose to Lando Heatran and disincentivize the, uh, you know, Lando Heatran play from our opponents because I feel like those Pokemon are very, very good right now. And by basically taking out the Lando Heatrans from most of our opponent's Pokemon or from their team, we can basically like sweep the legs on the uh, engine that makes most of their team work. So that being said, what is the second thing uh, that I want this team to do. I think the second thing that I want this team to do is uh, number two, uh, not lose to Torn Urshi. You know, easier said than done. Um, I think that Torn Urshi is a very, very good core right now. You got that Prankster Tailwind enabling an Urshifu Rapid Strike deal for absolutely massive surging strikes, sometimes boosted in rain by a tornado. It's a very easy team comp to play. So I don't want to lose that team uh, to that team because I feel it's so easy to play that, you know, um, it's pretty easy to lose that team and fall into our opponent's tempo trap. And so I want to have ways to mitigate that damage, slow the game down just a little bit if I have to. And uh, I think it's gonna be pretty important that we do that. And the last thing, maybe this should have been the first thing. I want a team, uh, a team that is easy to play. Now, I'm gonna be taking this team probably to a Premier Challenge, an official tournament put on by Pokemon TPCI. This is for circuit points for the World Championships, and these tournaments last a long time. Sometimes they're five or six rounds of Swiss with a top cut after that. So I want a team that's easy to play, so I don't really even have to think about what I'm doing on a turn-by-turn -turn basis. It's all pretty straightforward. We're gonna get some easy speed control. We're gonna have some good fake out pins. We're gonna have some good matchups. We're gonna have some bad matchups, but in every single matchup, I'm probably gonna be playing almost exactly the same way. So an easy team to play that has a good match for Slando Heatran and doesn't lose to Torn Urshi, I feel like anyone would want a team like this. So hopefully you guys like this little guide and we're gonna be getting on into it. We're gonna be breaking down how to add the mons that I want why I add the mons that I want. And then at the very end, after we do everything, we're gonna be breaking down every lead option, breaking them down into different tiers. So if you guys like that, think about leaving a like on the video. Uh, it would really, really help me out. Think about dropping a sub on the channel if you haven't as well. We're going through a little bit of a rough patch on YouTube. So any support on this video really, really does help me out. So that being said, now that I know the three things that I want to do, which are very, very general, pretty vague, pretty broad, how would I even do that? I wanna start adding mons to accomplish these goals. And the first one I'm gonna do is have a good matchup for Landorus and Heatran. So the way that I like to do this, I think some people like to, they like to open up Pokemon Showdown and they like to look at every single Mon. Maybe they go to like Picolytics and look at different websites and usage stats. You can do the same thing on Pokemon Home. I actually just like to open up my boxes and take a gander through my boxes until I find Mons that I think are unique and they're fun. They can actually get the job done. I do this a lot. Um, Miss Magis, you know the Pokemon right here, is not this Pokemon for this video. But um, I'm going to cut to the chase right here and tell you the Mon that I think checks both Landorus and Heatran, if used correctly, is going to be 
iron hands and obviously everyone's like well of course you use iron hands iron hands is like the best pokemon ever um well we're gonna use iron hands in a little bit different way one thing that i really do like to do when i'm looking through all my boxes here is come across mons that i think can get the job done and think what could i tweak about that from it being its exact standard self to being able to actually get the job done and we're going to talk about why iron hands is perfect for checking out the landers and heatran because people can see why it checks heatran you know fighting versus steel it's a pretty good one but Hands getting intimidated by Landorus and then Earthquake by Landorus, that's probably not the best situation, but we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So the next thing I, I want to talk about is, if we go back to this, is how to not lose the Torn Urshi. I think that's going to be easier said than done. I think it's going to be easier said than done, but I think there's one mon that uh, has been a mainstay in competitive play for a long time that people aren't necessarily using a ton of right now. You still see it pop up at like, you know, regionals and international uh, events, but that's going to be Amoongus. I think Amoongus has dropped off the face of the earth. And yeah, you still see it in like top cut every once in a while, but honestly, like Amoongus is still very, very good. It gets regenerative slash effect sport, has that poison timing and that grass typing. So yes, this guy can take damage from like bleak wind storms from tornadoes, but you can rage powder away that Urshifu. And then if you have a teammate, maybe like an iron hands, they can just take out their Urshifu and you trade a Moongus for their Urshifu. Their Urshifu can't be a bully anymore, which means the rest of your Pokemon that might have weaknesses that Urshifu don't need to really care. So this is just an easy solve. Maybe you can even throw like a Rocky helmet on here and just solve that uh, Torn Urshi matchup every single time. Uh, Amoongus is going to be a Torn Urshi player's worst nightmare to fight, I guarantee you. Think about adding some Amoongus to your teams. It also has a decent matchup against Trick Room, which you can actually see, like, our team of, like, Iron Hands Amoongus, we're pretty chonky, so this should disincentivize Trick Room a little bit from our opponents. Um, the last thing that we actually wanted to cover on our little list here was having a team that was easy to play, right? And we were talking about we really don't want to lose a Torn Urshi because it's so easy to play. So we're actually going to be adding a Torn Urshi of our own. Now, you may be thinking, like, that's a, we're, what, we're, we're seven minutes into this video. Um, I don't want to see a guide on Torn Urshi. Um, everyone knows how to play Torn Urshi. Everyone's done it before. I'm going to be doing my best to go from scratch and kind of show why I think Torn Urshi can still be, I, I would say, a relatively fun and interactive experience, even though most people think it's like a glue-eating team and how it, I think it's the perfect team for newer players or players that just want to experiment and try something outside their comfort zone because it's not just that Torn Urshi is good, it's Torn Urshi with the addition of the small mons and the small changes we're going to be adding in this video that make this team pretty unique and one that's still good for competitive tournament play. So that being said, we're going to go back up here, search. And like I said, normally... Um, I would do this by just looking through my boxes, and I'm not going to lie to you guys. I haven't built all my spreads yet, but I kind of went through my boxes and found mons that I liked and that I wanted to use. So, like, I kind of already had an idea going forward. So, that being said, if our team here is Iron Hands, Amoongus, Tornadus, Urshi, this will be effectively uh, doing the three things that I said. It will have, let us have a good match versus Landorus and Hands, since I finished this hand set. It'll let us have a good match against Torn Urshi. Um, I was also going to say, like, not lose the Torn Urshi. I was going to say earlier, uh, the Mirror right? Um, because like, I, I also just don't really like fighting mirror matches that much. Highly optimizing my team for mirror matches is a very good idea. And then having an easy to execute combo where I can just go Torn Urshi myself, have some good mons in the back to close out. It's a pretty, pretty standard way to do it. And it really raises the bar on forcing your opponent to meet you at your level, which I think is a very, very important part of competitive play. So that being said, let's add the next two mons. I think at this point, we are going to be wanting to add some, well, let's take a look at one thing first. Let's go up here. And let's take a look at a team builder, right? This is going to be a defensive type chart team builder. Let's throw an Iron Hands in here. And let's throw a Moongus. Ah, if I can type. Let me know if you guys use team builders. I think team builders like this are very, very important. Let's throw Urshfu Water. Urshfu Rapid Strike. And let's throw Tornadus. So by using a, a team builder like this, you can kind of see where are you getting holes. Like, we have three weaknesses of Psychic already. That's pretty significant. The good thing is there aren't really that many Psychic Mons in the meta, and even if there are Psychic Mons in the meta, like Cresselia, uh, it's not that big of a deal. I would say Gothitelle would be probably the hardest problem, and Urshifu just, like, rolls it. So the fact that, like, none of our Mons do, you know, bad damage to Psychic Mons, that's probably fine. Um, as long as the last two Mons we're adding aren't weak to Psychic, I think we're good. We also have two weaknesses to Fairy we gotta watch out for. We have a couple weaknesses to Rock. Not Rock yet. Um... Yeah, we have a couple, we need to a couple other things, but I think it's still fine. We have decent offensive typing. I think the thing that we really want to add here is probably a cover for that Psychic. Because Psychic's getting a little bit out of control. Psychic's getting a little bit out of control. And I also think this is a very, very fun to play Pokemon right now. A lot of people are just going to think that I'm like, 
I'm eating the glue here, but like I really do think that when you get into a team building guide like this, like three or four mons in, you should really try and add like a mon that gives your team like a theme, you know? And the best mons to do that are actually the Ruin mons. So like Chi Yu would be like, my theme is like Flutter Chi Yu, I do big special attack damage. You can go Ting Lu, I mitigate damage. Wo Shen, I mitigate damage. Shen Pao, I deal that damage on the physical side. One thing that we're seeing in this format, Regulation E specifically, is that we're seeing a lot of people not even care that like Intimidate Spam is a big deal. Um, they're just adding like full physical offense and just having good matchup against those mons that are those big Intimidators. Like so if your opponent's using like Landorus and Hisui and Arcanine, you know, adding mons like water mons just that, that crit everything like Urshifu, they don't even have to care that your opponent's using those. I do also think, though, remember we were talking about like adding mons that uh, cover up for our weakness to Landris and Heatran. Sacred Sword Shempao with like Ice Spinners and things like that can be very, very nice to add. Um, if we throw Shempao into this team builder, though, and I, I still think Shempao's very good. Uh, in my opinion, I'm not bored of Shempao. I still think it's very, very good. So let's add Shempao. So Shempao comes in here. And now Shempao adds... Um, another fairy weakness and a, a, you know, again, it helps mitigate that psychic weakness because we can go for those big dark attacks into those psychic bonds. But what's the last mon that we want to add here? One that could preferably help us cover up with that fairy weakness. I think something that has more priority to be able to pair with the Shen Pao would be very nice. I think something that has good defensive typing could be very nice. Most people go Shen Pao Dragonite. I think in this situation, we would probably be better off with, I'm sure you guys are already understanding where we're going here. Where are we going here? We're going into Arcanine, but not just any Arcanine. We're probably going to go into Hisui Arcanine. I only have one of these guys right now. But yeah, Hisui Arcanine is a rock uh, rock fire type. It gets extreme speed. This is the new Arcanine people are using right now. I think this Pokemon's like actually won like the last three or four, you know, big international events. And if you see, if we throw this into the, uh, you know, the defensive type chart here, Arcanine, make sure to click the Hisui form. You can see that, yeah, this comes with a couple other weaknesses. You know, now we have uh, three weaknesses to Rock being on Hisui, Arcanine, Shenpao, and Tornadus. But, like, let's think about it. Like, what's using Rock moves? First of all, other Hisui and Arcanines, which are problematic. And things like Landorus. I would say those are the only two mons that are realistically using moves. Whenever you're uh, thinking, like, wow, I have a big weakness with a specific type, think of, like, well, yeah, you can have that weakness of the type, but, like, what Pokemon are using those moves? Do they stab those moves? Do they have high base stats uh, offensively? Like, it's actually pretty important. So that being said, like, Urshifu should do a pretty good job of disincentivizing uh, a lot of rock moves, being able to hit our Mons. And Amoongus is a decent defensive pivot. Iron Hands being able to resist, resist those moves, great pivot. And it, if they do stab those moves, Iron Hands is able to come in hot with a big Drain Punch. So I really, really like what this team brings to the table defensively. Um, and I think that... We're doing pretty good so far. This is a very standard looking team, but now it's up to us as team builders. You know, a lot of people would just take a look at this team like, that's it, this is standard hyper offense. Like, what are we gonna get out of here? It's up to us to use unique EV spreads, unique item choices, unique move set choices, and create some very unique flow chart situations to make this team actually shine. This is the thing that I think I'm personally this is probably the thing I'm best at at Pokemon, as opposed to just like playing the game. But we're going to take a look at that right now. Um, we're going to go into a team builder and we're going to type in Iron Hands. We're going to do the same exact thing. So Iron Hands, Amoongus. And I would implore you guys to take these steps the exact way that I'm doing. Like add these mods one at a time. Take a look at them in the team defensive team builder. Uh, make sure you're okay with the weaknesses that you have moving forward. And then from there, add them like this. The next thing we're going to be doing is adding moves. We want to add moves before working on Taros, before working on items, before working on Eevees, just because we want to get uh, as many um, moves that we know we want these Pokemon to do to serve their specific roles. Their roles are going to be very, very important. You've heard me talk about that on this channel before. And we want to make sure that their roles are being done right. I'm going to show you an example of a good way to add moves and a bad way to add moves, right? So like, let's say, or a good way to add mons to the team, right? So like a good way would be something like, you know, saying like, all right, well, what do I want the Shempao to do? Well, you know, um, I, I want the Shempao to be able to make it so I can go for as many priority moves, like, you know, fake outs here, aqua jets here, extreme speeds here, and make this a Sui Arcanine. Um, so that means the Shempao needs ice spinner, right? And so, is there anything else I need Shen Pao to do? Maybe put suck Sacred Sword. We talked about Sacred Sword for being able to check those Hisui Arcanines. So that's all we really need him to do, right? So an obvious look at the Shen Pao would say like, well, Sash Shen Pao is probably right there. So, you know, you might say, well, I'll just go Sash here and then I'll just go Ghost here. And, you know, I'll just put like Protect and I'll, I'll just put like Sucker Punch here. And, you know, maybe I'll, I'll just click the button and go full speed because this is my set. Like if you were to run Sash Shen Pao, this is what you would do. I'm here to tell you that that's not necessarily the best way to do it because when you do that, 
you're saying, I have to use Shen Pao like this, and I'm forcing my teammates to uh, build around a Shen Pao that realistically, you know, put the carrot before the horse. It got to its moveset finished without actually realizing like what it did for the team. It's taking too much of the team's resources by itself. So if we go back to the Shen Pao, right? And we just say, hey, you know, I want Ice Spinner. And I want, like, also, again, I, I'll, I'll get to what I'm talking about. Um, if we walk in and say we have to use Sash, we have to use Ghost, we have to use it with this set, we're locking out its ability to maybe be Life Orb, to maybe be Choice Man, heck, to maybe be Covert Cloak, Assault Vest, Choice Scarf. There's so many different things Shenpao could be used for and saying it has to be used one way before we take the time to understand what the roles of the rest of the team are and what type of support they need. Uh, we're basically, you know, capping the effective use of all of our other Pokemon and making them bend to Shen Pao's will, which that's how teams can become boring. That's how metas can become boring is when you start team building like that. I'm here to say just knowing two things you want Shen Pao to do and then moving on to another Mon and trying to flesh that guy out a little bit, that's going to be pretty important. So we're actually going to start with Iron Hands here. And I'm going to start with a move on Iron Hands. I don't know why people aren't using right now, but if you remember what we were talking about, what is the one thing we want? We want to have a good matchup for Slando and Heatran. So to have that good matchup against Slando, we're going to have Drain Punch, right? Going to have that Drain Punch. This is what you do against Lando, or sorry, against Heatrans. What do we do against Slando, though? It's an elect, it's a ground type. Uh, it's a flying type. It doesn't really take that much damage from hands, and it's a great check into us. I'm going to add Ice Punch. Now, you may be thinking, Ice Punch? Ice Punch hands. That's... That's pretty out there. You know, Iron Hands usually has like a good four moveset syndrome. It needs Fake Out, it needs Heavy Slam to beat Flutters, it needs an Electric Attack like Thunder Punch or Wild Charge, uh, it needs Drain Punch to be able to check those Heatrans and other Mons. There's no room for Ice Punch. And I'm here to tell you that if you want to be stubborn and put Ice Punch on your hands, they're going to look at your team and be like, fuck, I can't bring Lando. They have like Shen Pao, they have Urshi, they have Iron Hands, they have their own Intimidator, they have an Amoongus that could redirect me from either of those things. Like, Lando's not a good matchup here. And if you remember what our very first thing that we said was, what do we want this team to do? Have a good match for Slano Hands. You don't get much better than it's just not coming. So, uh, Ice Punch. Now, that being said, we don't want to look at our Terras yet. We don't want to look at our Eevees. We don't want to look at anything yet. This is what we wanted Iron Hands to do. Let's move on to the next Pokemon. We're going to come back to Hands after we fleshed out the rest of our team a little bit. What do we want Amoongus to do? Not lose the Torn Urshi, right? So, that being said, Rage Powder. This is the thing that we want to use to beat Tornershi. This redirects that Surging Strikes. What else do we want Amoongus to do? We can put Spore there. We know Amoongus is going to want to Spore. Now, you may be thinking, all right, well, you know, obviously, whenever you use Rage Powder, you're going to want Protect. So we definitely do want Protect there. You know, being able to weave in Protects in between these Rage Powders is the actual key to making Redirection work. If you have just Redirection, like a Follow Me user or Rage Powder user, and it doesn't have Protect, what your opponent can just do is target its teammate every single turn and force you to Rage Powder. Or... Even worse, they can just target you down every turn because by targeting you, they force you to Rage Powder in those situations and you can't Protect Bait them. So having Protect elongates the effect of Rage Powder, being able to weave in those Protects every other turn if you need to or at your own leisure. So Protect and Rage Powder go together like hand, like peas in a pod, uh, hot chocolate on a, on a cold Christmas day and just, yeah, they're good. Um, and you may be thinking the last move set could be something like Pollen Puff. This team's a little bit aggressive. I might not want Pollen Puff. So we just move on to the next month. So moving on to the next month. Note that we're just looking to the search for here. We're probably gonna want Surging Strikes, right? Uh, I think you should have Aqua Jet for Arcanine here. And then from here, you could say, we'll just go Close Combat Detect. And I was like, okay, but what if this team needs a Scarf, right? That would be more like Ice Spinner Close Combat on an Urshi. What if we want to use Mystic Water? What if we want to use Scarf? What if we want to use Band? What if we want to use the Sash here? There's so many different things. We don't need to say Urshifu has to do anything just yet. We can move on to the next one. What do we want Trainers to do? We want it to Tailwind to make this team as easy to play as possible. So Tailwind's going to go up right there. What do we want our next moves to be? I think that you should add Bleak Windstorm. That's just my opinion. I think it's a really, really good move. Yes, you missed some of these, but you hit some of them too. Additional speed control, it's not that bad. I think the rest of the moves on this turn, though, you could put Taunt, you could put Protect, you could put Icy Wind, uh, you could put Rain Dance to further enable your Urshifu. I think we can move on from Torn and take a look at Arcanine. So what do we want Arcanine for? Uh, I think I talked about it already. Uh, I like Extreme Speed on Arcanine, so Extreme Speed's going to be good. Extreme Speed is going to be good. Um, I think that you're probably going to want Rock Slide. And I think we can leave it blank. I don't even know if I want Flare Blitz yet. I might want something like Close Combat. And then from there, something like Head Smash, right? So I'm going to lock myself into that. I don't even want to say that I'm going to ban this guy, even though I'm probably going to ban this guy. 
But um, you know, there are popular sets that also feature things like Will-O-Wisp and Howl. Um, so like a set that looks like this won Sacramento Regionals like a month ago, right? So you don't want to say you have to use this set and build each Mon without thinking of how they affect the team. You want to just add a couple moves that you know that you personally like that help you accomplish your goals with your team and that that's all you really need. Taking a look at the Shimpow, we're back at Shimpow, right? So now that we've kind of fleshed this out, we've understood a little bit of what we're doing, we can start kind of fleshing out some of these move sets just a little bit more. If I'm being honest, I'm probably going to go Sash Shimpow. I am probably going to go Banded Arcanine. I'm thinking Rocky Helmet and or Citrus on the Torn. I'm still undecided. Um, I want to have a better matchup against Torn Urshi. But I also want a good matchup against Shimpow. So I might go Rocky Helmet here. I'm thinking Mr. Water here is very easy to play. Citrus or Rocky Helmet here. Again, these two Torn items are going to be interchangeable. And then the Assault Vest. That's kind of what I'm thinking for this team. Again, I have not fleshed this out, but this is just what I'm thinking. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to build this like it is a Sash Shimpow. I'm going to add the Sucker Punch. I think Lash Out is very good. I think Crunch is very, very good. But I'm going to add the Sucker Punch for how I'm trying to play this team. And I'm, of course, I'm going to add the Protect. Note that we're still not putting the Sash there. We're still not messing with the Terra. We're still not taking a look at the Eevees. We're just trying to flesh out these Eevees, these movesets. Um, this last thing here. This is a really, really crazy thing. Do I want Fake Out with Iron Hands? One could say, of course you want Fake Out with Iron Hands. But I think when you're playing at like a professional level, Fake Out can be good to close out games. But that means your hands is like more of a checkmate piece that you bring in. I'm going to be using my hands in the mid game. And... Honestly, when I fight, when, when people bring out that hands in the mid game against me, what I usually do is like, I'm like, okay, they're going to, they're going to fake out. I'm just going to pivot. And they're, the defensive power right now in the meta between like all the Arcanines and the Heatrans and the Landris and the Ogre Ponds and the Flutter Mains, there's so much defensive power in this meta that I think like everyone's like, okay, well, if you're just going to fake out me, I'm just going to swap to one of my mons and you're just going to waste your turn. Uh, I don't even want to fall for that bait. I don't want to fall for that bait. I don't need to fake out a choice mon so badly that I end up getting baited and losing the game for it. So I'm not even going to use fake out. Remember, what do we want? We wanted a team that's easy to play. And I don't want to have to go into like, should I fake out this? Should I not fake out this? Could I get a little bit more value by doing something else? No. We just want the coverage. We just want Iron Hands to be a mon that says like, bro, you can't, you can't bring this Pokemon. You can't bring this Pokemon. This is what we're doing. So... That being said, I'm going to add my moveset that makes me check the most amount of Pokemon. This checks the Landorus. This also checks Heatran if you want to go Grass Terror, which is still popular. This checks Regor Heatrans. I'm going to add Thunder Punch for now over Wild Charge. I'm not a fan of Wild Charge. We'll talk about that, why that is in a minute. Not that Wild Charge is bad. I just don't think it's good for this team. And the last move is going to be Heavy Slam. So this checks Fairies and Flutter. This checks Landos. This checks Heatrans. This checks Tornershies and everything else with a decent stab. Pretty solid moveset. Cool. Next mod. Amoongus. I think I am going to add the Pollen Puff. Um, just because I want to be able to side Pollen Puff basically just this hands. If I get like both their mons asleep or I can make a sick read, maybe I can like pivot in one of my mons and side Pollen Puff like one of my mons. Something like that could work. I think Pollen Puff is a decent move on Amoongus, so we're just going to sit on that. As for this Urshifu, we will be adding the Detect. We want Detect over Protect because we want to be able to play around in Prism Protect from our opponent. Uh, detect is also better in case you get Encored. You have less of them. When you run out of PP and you um, are Encored, you actually are freed from that Encore. So it's always better to use Detect uh, whenever you can. Just do that. And then the last move, we're just going to throw Close Combat here. So Close Combat is going to be good. Tornadus. This is going to be a weird one. I'm going to put Protect here. I, I'm, I'm going to be that Protect Torn guy because I, I, I don't think I'm going to run Covert Cloak. And I, I don't think Covert Cloak Torn is that good. So I'm going to run Protect. And then I'm looking at what else I want done. We could throw Taunt or Rain Dance here. And for this right here, I'm going to throw Taunt. And the reason I'm going to throw Taunt is Amoongus. I want to be able to Taunt. I don't want to lose to the same thing I'm trying to beat other people with. So this should disincentivize the Amoongus just enough to make it so it can't spore. If it were to, if it were to Rage Powder things, I can always just go Protect with my Urshi, Taunt the Amoongus to see what they do, and then next turn, punish the Amoongus' as teammate. The Amoongus has to swap because it can't really do anything effective. So I like this play a lot. Uh, this could definitely get cut, though, for Rain Dance. I'm not a bit, I don't think that like going all in and Rain Dancing is good either because like I, I don't like fighting Rain in general, so I'm not going to give them free Rain. Um, <laughs> free Rain. <laughs> Okay, uh, Arcanine. Um, I think that I will add the Flare Blitz here. Note that like we still aren't using that uh, the Raid Dance there. And the last move here, you know, you could put like a Terra Blast. You could make like Fairy Terra. There's so many different things you can do. I'm actually going to add Head Smash. Um, I've been fighting some people at my locals that use Head Smash Arcanine. 
and it's surprisingly busted. So I'm going to go with Head Smash. And it's a single target. It's base 150 move. Yeah, it's not that accurate, but like they're dead. They're gone. So if you weed like Arcanine and one of these guys, you just go <coughs> Dunzo. Easy peasy, woman squeezy. Shemp out, we already got the move set. So now that we have all of our moves, now we can take a look at these items and, and lock in those items. So let's go Sash here. Let's go Assault Vest. Let's go with the Citrus on the Amoongus, being able to better, you know, elongate its presence on the board. I think Rage Powder is good. Um, I think uh, Rocky Helmet's good, but we're gonna use it on the Torn. Um, we're gonna go Mystic Water here for the testing here. And then we're gonna go with uh, Rocky Helmet here. This is gonna be pretty good. Like most of the mons that would actually threaten or shoot like other Shimphouse and stuff like that, they would lose their Sash and break in your Torn. And I really, I really just like this. Um, Arcanine, we're gonna go Band. And then on Shimpel, we will go Sash, like I said. So now, now that we finally have all of these things done, we can start taking a look at some EV spreads. Note that we're still not doing Terra. I think Terra is more like the icing on the cake, something you can use to solve for very bad matchups if you need to. So we're going to start taking a look at Iron Hands here. And the first calc that we need to do is Iron Hands versus Landorus. Um, so let's plug that in. So we got Iron Hands and... Go all the way down to a blank set, set these to 50, and we're going to be looking at Lander Asterion. Scroll all the way down, set these guys to 50, not that hard. All right, so Lander Asterion, right? It comes with the Intimidate here. Make sure the Intimidate box is ticked. Um, and let's just plug in this Ice Punch. I want you guys to see what we do with Ice Punch before and after. So that's right up here. Ice Punch, if we come in after Intimidate is already in the board, like let's say they get a KO, we bring in Iron Hands, we're, they're dead. We don't even need any investment. Ice Punch will always KO, but if we are intimidated, we're dead. So we can do a couple things about this, right? How much, first of all, how much uh, do we need nature? I th I'd say you should still go nature on your iron hand. So let's take a look at adding it with adamant. Um, so it gives us a little bit big of a boost. And then from there, note that like, if you take a look at our team, what could we add to help us KO that lander? So we could add something like an Urshfu and have Aqua Jet plus the uh, ice Punch KO. We can add Arcanine and go like intimidate them, make them do less damage to us. Extreme Speed plus the Ice Punch KO. That's very, very nice. I think another thing that we could do is also add Shempao with its ability Sword of Ruin. So we're just going to change our ability over here to Sword of Ruin just to show you how it works. So if I swap in, if I swap in my Shempao and I'm just adamant, I don't even have any points in here, I can just one shot a Landorus every single time. Now this is a base nothing landorus uh common landorus spreads are this is the one that is the frailest that you're going to see is this one right here so we want to add a few points to make sure we still ko that one right there 44 um the reason why that landorus spread is popular because it always lives in urshifu surging strikes if you go flying terra but yeah that's going to ko landorus every single time now you may be thinking well that's a they could just go uh flying typing right where's the flying terra if I can, for, it's it's early in the morning, guys. And then it's still a two shot. And if you're flying, like I can just swap over to using a different move. Like if you're flying, like cool, that means like you lose to this guy now. You know, this still does damage. This still does damage. We're still fine. So that being said, um, adding those, I think it was 44. Yeah, 44 points plus nature is gonna let us check Lando pretty much every single time. And they're not really gonna know that. They're not really gonna feel that vibe. Uh, so I, I think it's gonna be very good. Note that I'm going adamant over something like a brave. I actually want a little bit of speed. And so now that we know exactly how much damage we need, I want to make sure one more time. Uh, let's see how much damage we do against like a flutter main. We're gonna still keep the uh, sword of ruin uh, box ticked on that one right now. So a standard flutter. Let's plug in heavy slam here. It does a lot. And let's give ourselves an intimidate. It's they're still dead. Even if they were to go like full investment here, they're still dead on it. And that they'd have to go like. Like freaking 252, 252 plus Intimidate. If they have 252 HP and defense, they're, they're still dead to Heavy Slam. So like this is a fine calc. Um, you don't need any more attack than that. So from there, what else do you usually want to do? Normally you want to add your speed first. Make sure your speed tier is good. Iron Hands, I, I want a little bit of speed just so I know I can outspeed other hands. But I realistically think the next thing you want to do is just max out this Spadef stat. Because Iron, Iron Hands has just a garbage special defense that is a good defense stat um as a great attack stat humongous base hp stat you don't really want to add that many points in hp on hands because you're gonna get diminishing returns on that if you guys want um 
you know, a guide on how diminishing return works, let me know. I'll try and make something like that to show you guys what I mean. I usually only put about 28 points in speed on iron hands. This is going to let me have like four or five levels of like speed creep on other hands. I think 74 is a decent level too. You can outspeed some things um, if you are in a tailwind. So I think this is a fine way to do it. And then from there, um, I usually end up throwing probably about 100 in defense because again, you don't need that much in, in HP and you can just throw the rest in HP at that point. Um, you don't want to put a ton in HP just because it's, it's such a bloated number already. One could even argue that something like, like this with just four there and like 180 in defense could be better. But uh, I, I think this is fine because um, you want a little bit of HP to be able to like, you know, mitigate some damage to the spit off side. So adding it just helps a little bit. But yeah, this set lets us hit as hard as we want, as fast as we want, and mitigate as much damage to the special defense side as we want. So I like this set a lot. And uh, yeah, just move on to the Amoongus here. Know that we're still not doing the Terrace. Save that for last. So Amoongus, what do we really want to mitigate with this Amoongus? We want to mitigate damage from Torn Urshi. So we already know for a fact that we're going to be able to eat that Surging Strikes every single time. But I want to see how much damage they deal with Bleak Wind. And if possible, I want to get that to do about 50% so it activates my citrus right if it activates my citrus I'm gonna be able to use that before any other mon so if they have like torn and something else um, Torn would activate my citrus with the weak one and then it'd be fine So let's plug in Amoongus here And let's just see if we can mitigate it even further like that's fine, you know set this to 50 and we're going to go tornadoes All right So 50 here and then we're gonna plug in bleak wind storm Make it sure it's set to doubles. And so you see right there, we want to get this high end to, uh, sorry, we want to get the low end to 51, like 51, so it'll always proc a citrus. So that being said, Amoongus is going to run something similar to like 236. Uh, and then from there, we want to bump this up. Come on, there we go, right there. So 88 is going to be, sorry, 80, 84. Is the same, same thing as Iron Hands, Limau. It's going to make it so this is always going to activate our Citrus. This is going to make us as healthy as possible. Um, yes, Bleak Wind Storm is still a two-hit KO um, without our Citrus. So if we take other damage, there is, you know, or we lose our item from like a knockoff or something, there is problems there. But this is also from a zero special attack tornadoes. Let's start taking a look at what would happen if we fought against like a full special attack tornadoes. And zero special attack tornadoes are still very common. There's a lot more damage needs to get mitigated. So I think we might be ending up having to go into like a careful nature or a calm nature. So let's take a look at the calm nature, see what that changes here. Here we go. And we're still going up. We're trying to remember, get this number up here to a little bit over 50 without wasting a ton of points. Cool. So 192 or is it one, 188 is the number there. Yep. All right, let me see. Might even be lower. Might be 180. 180 is gonna make it so it's the most amount of damage that they can actually do with a full special attack torn to barely activate our citrus And that's that's fine. Um, this is a good set for us. So we're gonna go back over here We're gonna 236 the reason we want to go 236 is because you usually don't want to go over 220. That's just a good rule of thumb um, What is our number there? We had 180 180 with nature And we're gonna make our Mugus speed reduced on this team specifically and then from there We just have a few extra points. We can go something like uh, 84 and actually, no, we can just go 92. Yeah, I was gonna say normally you wanna split that up into an 84 and then an 88, but we don't want any points in attack. We actually wanna be zero in attack so we take reduced damage from foul play. But yeah, this is a standard looking set. You can always even check your EVs to make sure you're not wasting any by taking one point out. And if you see if the number goes down by one, well, up, oh, one sec. <laughs> so if we do this and we take one point out, if this goes to a 134, that means we're in the right, right spot. Yep, means we're in the right spot. Cool, so Moongus pretty good. Pretty easy. Note that we still haven't even locked in our abilities yet. I'll tell you guys right now. We're going to play Regenerator here. We should have locked in our abilities a little while ago. But, like, most of our mods only really have one. I think Regenerator is better on this team than, uh, uh, what is it, FX Spore? FX Spore is actually still a good ability, but, like, it just isn't exactly what we're looking for here. So, Urshifu. Urshifu is a bit of a mixed bag, right? A lot of people would just do this. And you're not wrong for this. You're not, you're not wrong for this at all. Um, I have, like, a default Urshifu spread I was looking at. And I'm going to try and do this one. So the Urshfu spread that I'm taking a look at actually goes 188 Jolly. And the 188 Jolly lets us like just outspeed like enough stuff. This lets us outspeed an Iron Bundle when we have a Tailwind. And then from there, you can still Oko the Iron Bundle with the Ghost Comet. So like against Bundle, this is kind of nice. And then from there, you just split up your points in bulk. Now one could say you could just throw 68 points here. But what you really want to do is throw like a little bit more points. Like Urshifu has a huge bloated HP stack compared to its Spadef. So what I like doing is a 44, 
four twenty. And so whenever you can, you want to split up like points of eight into copies of four because the first four points matter. And after that, it's every eight. So four gives you something. Um, Twelve gives you something. Twenty gives you something. Um, so you want to get those fours kind of used whenever you want. So this Urshifu is going to be able to basically function as fast as a normal Urshifu would. Um, it's still not a full speed Urshifu, but it's fast enough. Um, it's bulky enough to also eat the right amount of damage from a lot of these monsters, especially when you combine it with like Intimidates and some Redirections. I think it's going to be a very, very solid Urshifu set. There are things that we could change, but I think this is a good uh, base set moving forward. And I also think that's one thing. Whenever you're building your teams, you don't need to knock it out of the park on the first time. You just need to get an understanding and you need to be confident and play with things that you think are good, right? So when I'm building this EV spread, I'm gonna test it in some games. When it does well, I'm gonna feel good that something I thought was good worked. And then when it doesn't work, yeah, I might feel bad that it doesn't work, but then I'll know that like, okay, well then I need to go learn some Urshavu Kyle, because I need to go learn some speed tiers a little bit better. And I'll know exactly what to fix because I took the time to make this set. And so I know what works and what doesn't. And you guys can do the same thing. Uh, Tornadus. Rocky Helmet Tornadus is a bit different. We're gonna take a look at some Urshi Calcs for this guy. Um, so, cause that's the number one mom we're trying to beat, right? So we're gonna plug in, we already have Tornadus on that side, we're just gonna plug in Urshi on this side. And, uh, Urshi, Urshifu, hey there, Urshifu. Okay, this is another reminder to leave a like on the video if you guys are at this far, I appreciate it. So a standard Urshi, let's just plug in Surging Strikes. That does a lot. We're dead, right? I don't want to die. I, I don't think there's a problem with going at full special attack, full speed torn, but not on like a Rocky Helmet set. Um, so that being said, let's take a look at like the worst case scenario, which is I don't ever want to die to uh, an Urshifu ever for even like a second. So the worst case scenario is that. I don't even think you can live that, by the way. And that's another reason why I don't want Rain Dance because like Rain Dance takes them out of levels that I can mitigate, but I can mitigate this. So... <clears throat> that being said, I think that like having like a heavy HP investment is good. Um, and then from there, we don't need to have, well, we'll see how much we actually need. Keep these numbers rolling. So this lets me always eat a Mystic Water Adamant Surging Strikes. That's ridiculous. That's all the investment I need, 252, 92. From there, I want to see how much uh, speed I need on my turns to always outspeed their Urshifu. If you can see what an Adam Urshifu gets to 149, I remember Urshifu at 155 still outspeeds that. But let's see what would happen if they were Jolly, right? It goes to 163. I'm going to tell you right here, you want to outspeed, you want to get to 168 to outspeed base 100s, which is Chiyu. So we want our turn to still get past base 100 if we can. So we want to get to uh, 168, because 167 is those base 100, sorry. So it looks like we can't get there yet, which means we're going to have to be uh, timid, right? We're going to have to be timid. And you, you usually want to put your nature in your highest stat as well. We're, we could put it in special attack, but we don't necessarily need it. So timid here. Um, and we go right there. So 172, 92, 252. We might have enough points for this. Let's see. We might. So 172. Bam, 92. And we almost have enough points for this. There might be a way to make this work. There might. There might be a way to make this work. We're eight points off. 172, 92. So that means what we actually want to do is go, like, because Tornadus has a lower base defense. Um, we can actually put a couple of those points. Let's make this back adamant. Um, we can basically add points specifically to defense and make the number go up correctly. So adamant mystic water surging strikes why did that did i have this calc wrong the whole time i think i did hold on two to two attack mystic water rapture for surging strikes first tornadoes okay so that means i was just wasting points in defense then no i wasn't cool 92 okay all right so we, we can fix this then so 100 244 it's even more mitigated that's the eight points that we need right there basically and then Yep, 236, 100. So we just found a way to get like eight extra points out of there. Or maybe not yet. Maybe 228? Yep, so 228, and then we got our extra eight there. Cool, cool. This might not be optimal, optimal, but we found a way to get all of our points. No, no, that was the last one was right, 236. Cool. So we got our speed out of outspeeding base 100s, right? Um, we could actually still, let me, let me optimize this a little bit more. Let me, let, me, let me take a look at this. So 212 is the most, the lowest you can go. So 212. 
two, one, two. And then you see all these extra points that we have here. We can go even something like a 20 in spadef and four. And this still doesn't die to that adamant urshi mystic water surging strikes. But now we get four, we get an extra point in special attack and three points of special defense out of this. Like that's really good. So we get our speed tier that we want. We get our, um, we get a little bit of special attack, a little bit of speed up, and we get the same level of HP mitigated. I like this set a lot. This is very, very nice. One thing as well that I like to say is like, or that I like to see as well is we have taunt right there. So what that tells other tornadoes is, is like, hey, we got a lot of speed. Watch out. I'm going to taunt you. Usually you see like tornadoes with like, you see the bulkier ones have a mental orb so they can soak that taunt. But this one just kind of is bulky and trying to bluff the fact that it has a little bit more speed but it has a lot of speed uh but if we fight against other trainuses we could be in for a bad time we want to be able to e-speed those we want to be able to aqua jet those we want to be able to bully those with the thunder punch so i like this set a lot i think this is very very nice i just don't ever want to have shim and trainus on the board because then that certain strikes would be able to kill my tornadoes gotta watch out for that cool as for Arcanine, I think this guy's a little bit of a easier one. I just want to make sure that my speed stat is what I want. You need to get to 120 to work off any plus one calcs, which we only really have from Bleak Wind Storm. This will let us outspeed things like, you know, uh, other genies and stuff like that. You need to get to 107, which we already outspeed. Outspeed like something like Dragapult, which is like one of the fastest Pokemon um, inside of a Tailwind. That being said, um, I think that like going a heavier speed Arcanine is probably okay. I want to make sure my Arcanine's always outspeed uh, Goldango. We could also say like you want to outspeed like Jolly Landorus. That could be something you might really want to do, but I don't know if we need to. I want to always outspeed Goldango. So Goldango is going to be an 84 base speed. So a full speed Goldango, not that we would ever see one, would be 149. So we want to get to 150 if possible. And you can see you got to go Jolly to do that. And I don't, I don't want to. So let's think like what Pokemon could we still outspeed um, while not doing that? Um, I think realistically... There aren't that many, um, you know, there's Rillaboom. You could always outspeed Rillabooms. Rillabooms aren't that fast. They're base 85. They usually only carry about, you know, 60-ish base speed. So that being said, I want the Sarkin to be just a little bit chonky. Um, and I think 121 is just the right number because this would, again, let us outspeed things like Genies if we had a minus one from Bleak Wind up. So if, like, their Tornado swaps in on a Bleak Wing, gets at minus one, my Arcanine can always outspeed there. So I think this is a standard way to play Arcanine because I really want the Adamant because we're going to be playing, we're mostly playing for E-Speed, which means speed isn't that that important. Now, like I was talking about, you could just throw the 172 right here. I don't think that's the way to, best way to do it. You want to cut up that last little eight that you're doing into, like, a 4-4 four, four, because one point in each of these respective stats is worth one... One point in two stats is worth more than the eight into one. And then just throw uh, that rest up there. And so can the Sarkin set be optimized? Probably, but it's perfect for just understanding what we want to do and seeing if like a choice band set is even the right idea. So that's what I'm going to do here. And the last but least for the Shempow, it's funny how we talked about all these things. Like we added this move set and we said Sash wasn't right. And it, like it might not have been right. We might have wanted ban. We might have wanted life orb. We still might want to go those routes. But understanding what specific Shimpow we wanted for this team was the right idea. I think there's nothing really wrong with clicking the button. I want my Shimpow to be as fast as possible. I never wanna I never wanna just know that a Fluttermain could outspeed me. I always want to force them to get those speed ties. I always want to force other Shimpows to speed ties as well. So now that we have all of our EVs done, what we want to do is go at our terrors. And so I think that you still have to go ghost terror here to keep them honest to stop fake outs. I think we want to go normal terror here to be able to better utilize that extreme speed. Uh, I think we want to go ghost terror here to just disincentivize fake outs. We never have to really do it. We want to double dip our water terror here. This also lets us uh, make sure we don't die from like dazzling gleams from like flutters. Uh, Amoongus is a bit of a weird one, right? You can go fire and I think I will. Um, cause it's better, it's good into fairies, uh, it's good into Heatran. Um, I think it will go fire. I don't know if we want to sit on this. Dark is also an acceptable Terra. And the hands will also be fire as well. You can also go Dragon Terra on Amoongus in some situations to be able to stop, like, Heatran's plush Urshboos and other things like that, uh, Ogre Ponds and things like that, but, you know, it is what it is. So here is our team. I think it's very, very nice. Click that little Validate button. And what we're going to do now is go just play a couple games to get, like, the experience of the team under our belt, and then we're going to go focus on the flow charts. So let's go play a couple games. All right. And we're going into the Regulation E best of three ladder. All right, let's take a look at this guy's team. So Life Orb Charizard with Weather Ball, Hurricane, kind of weird. Uh, Cobra Cloak Torn. You know, we don't need to fake out for that. Citrus Polytoad. We talked about Polytoad. Scarf Urshi. 
Pixie Plate Flutter. Don't see that one that often, but it's still good. And then the AV Rilla. So Rilla is going to be kind of hard to deal with versus like the Torn Urshi. Um, but like that's where something like Iron Hands with like Ice Punch could be very, very good in my opinion. So I do like Iron Hands in this matchup. I think we can actually just lead Iron Hands. And you could lead Iron Hands in Amoongus here because like there's not that much they can really do against it. And then from there, I don't know how much I need Arcanine. Arcanine's a bit of a hard sell, in my opinion, especially if they get up their speed control. So I think what I'm gonna do is actually just go Torn Urshi in the back and play it like super standard for game one, like super standard. So there's their Torn, there's their Flutter. Man, we don't really have to care about this. Like they don't have the ta they don't have the Taunt here. Um, and then if they wanna swap out that for what Zard, that's fine. Yeah, I think I'm actually just okay to click Fire Terra here and Heavy Slam away. If you would like to swap in your Urshi here. I think that's fine. I don't even know if you can kill my Amoongus. I'm, I'm actually just going to protect here. Uh, I don't want to deal with this. Protect? A good play? You can, what are you going to do? Bleak Wind? Like, Sunny Day. Okay, they're getting a boost here. Yo, Fire Terror hands busted. Awesome. Yeah, Sunny Day is great. Absolutely fine. Um, hmm. Yeah, we're just doing this round two. I don't think you kill here in, like, any situation. So, this is fine. What are you gonna, You're going to get put to sleep or killed. Um, and you can stay in. But yeah, I think this is good. I wonder if they went on like autopilot thinking that like I had fake out when I just don't. <laughs> Shoutable's fine. Amoongus is thick. Bleak win. Uh, not going to kill our Amoongus. You know, we got that EV spread on lock. It's going to activate our Citrus Berry, which we can combine with our Regenerator in just a bit. We take out the Flutter. Easy peasy, Woman Squeezy. We also have the situation to Spore here. So if they send out their Urshifu here, we can just click the redirection button, take out that Torn, take out the Urshifu, and we're good to go. Rilla, yo, I take these. Yo, appreciate this. They, they, they don't even have uh, high horsepower, so we're fine. Um, do we want to go after this guy or not? I think what I'm going to do is swap in my Torn to get a Regenerator proc and just, I'm trying to think of what they could even have here. They could swap in Zard, Toad, or Urshi, which means all of their mons take Thunder Punch damage, which means I'm just going to throw a Thunder Punch into the slot. I'm going to swap in my Torn, get a Regenerator proc. If you want to fake out my Iron Hands, I don't think it really matters that much. All right, sun is up. We're just vibing out here. Do the exact same play, but this time we're going to add a little bleak wind energy to it. Put a little bit of spice on it. And we don't need to taunt. Don't need to do anything. They get the wake up tailwind. You're never lucky one turn sleep. Like, qu quite literally, never ever lucky one turn sleep. Into a miss bleak wind for myself. Holy moly, absolutely gaming out here. Thunder Punch is probably okay. It still gets the KO. I was surprised. Um, damn, dude. Imagine like one turn sleep and a miss bleak wind. There's the Zard. We were talking about Zard. Zard um, doesn't really have the best way to hit either of these guys. Um, I think realistically, I could just protect my Torn here. I really think that I could just protect my Torn here, and that's probably the best play, so that is what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to actually Ice Punch the Rilla and just protect my Torn, and then I'm going to bring out Urshi, set my own Tailwind, because they're going to no longer have their Sun, and we're probably going to be good to go. There's no reason to go for the Zard either. They might just protect their Zard and try and do something. Ooh, let's look at that Terra Rilla. Yeah, go nuts. This is absolutely fine. You want to nuke the hands, I don't really care. Absolutely fine. Yeah, ain't no thing, right? So now weather, weather Ball is just not on the table. And I'm able to go with either of these. I'm going to go with the Urshi. And I'm thinking about what I really want to do. Because this is going to be a faster one has Hurricanes. I can So I can Weave and Detect. I can put up a Tailwind of my own. If you want to nuke into this guy, I think that this will let me just go into Omungus just fine. And then we just check the Rilla for there. So, I, I, again, we're playing it very, very, very passive. But I think that this is just going to let us, like, elongate the game out correctly. Um, and then we're going to bring in Amoongus, go, like, Rage Powder, stop Hurricanes and things like that. Check the Rilla, check the Zard. We have an extra turn of Tailwind. Yeah. Doing our absolute best. Not bad. Oh, they didn't go after the... They didn't take it out. Yo, we take those. Like, if that's how you're going to do it, I don't even need to... I don't even need to do that then. All right, so we're going to block that. And then from there, I would say we just... Uh, yeah, weak one's fine. This is their last turn tailwind. We miss. We hit one. So that puts Zarb within range. They miss a hurricane duel. Oh my gosh, look at this game. They go for the knockoff here. Knockoff on the Rocky Helmet. Not the most effective thing in the world. Now they're out of tailwind turns. They're out of grass drain turns. Urshfu just comes in and wins this game. Um, from there, I think it's still protecting is the right play. And going for just another bleak wind is probably fine. But we are going to be able to get this one. So not like the strongest game but like you just saw like the value that hands actually like brought to the table i would say we got pretty unlucky in this one overall too we missed a lot of bleak wins we got some one turn sleeps but you can see how like good defensive amoongus play was just like absolutely pivotal in this situation um do we need to do anything specific i don't think we do this is fine big big damage 
heat waves, no big deal. You can get the KO here too if you want. It, it really doesn't matter. Oh, dude, that speed drops though. <laughs> do we outspeed in the Rilla, dude? They're probably like a min speed Rilla. Tailwind Amoongus uh, outspeeds minus one Rilla, dude. Not bad. Not bad at all. So in this situation, um, I still think that we're probably going to be fine because the Zard is asleep. So we can just go Aqua Jet into the Rilla and then we just Aqua Jet the Zard and then we win. Cool. Yeah, it wasn't even like a problem at all. There wasn't like a single way that we ever lost there. So we're going to go into game two. And going into game two, um, that Flutter did not have an impact, so I wouldn't be surprised if they wanted to open up something like a little bit different and try and like bully us out. So we're going to save our hands in the back this time. That being said, I still am going to lead Amoongus. I'm actually going to lead Tornadus. I'm going to bring my hands in the back. And then I think the Tornadus is just a good mom versus their team. It's a good pivot, so I'm going to bring Tornadus for a little bit of late game Tailwind. So there's, ooh, look at these guys. Look at these guys. All right, so this is a Muddy Water helping an Encore Protect. So we're actually just going to Rage Powder away that guy this turn. And... Kind of just want to kill their Urshi. It's two turns hit. Let me think about this. Now nah, we can just spore there. We can just spore and probably pivot in. I don't need to pivot in anything. I'm trying to think of what I want to do. The Citrus guy is over there as well. I'm going to just swap in the hands. It's okay. Not doing anything else today. Yeah, protect's cool. They're trying to fish for Encores here. You turn so something's going to bed unless they bring in the Rilla here, which, like, I really you don't care. What are they going to do? Encore me to Spore? I'm going to Spore your Politoed next turn. So here we go. Spore Politoed. And Ice Punch. Cool. We're in a good situation. We're not, like, threatened by anything. You know, I feel it's like we're not just rolling every single opponent. But, again, we're not threatened by anything, which I think is, like, the, the big thing here. We, we don't really care that much about what they're doing. Um, they can go for a Fake Out. Yeah, absolutely fine. So they're just going to eat the Spore. I mean, I did click Spore. I will, I will do it again. <laughs> want to see me click Spore? Want to see me do it again? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it again, too. Like, what do you... Like, yeah. Like, we're just we're just vibing here. You have knockoff into this guy? I don't think that matters that much. So, yeah, we're just going to see Spore in that Polytoad slot because, like, we don't really care. But they can swap an Urshi over there. Knockoff's fine. Ice Punch does a ton. This might condition them into maybe going a different Terra. So, because they might be like, well, I can go Fire Terra and not die to Ice Punch. And it's like, okay. So then I'll spore this one, and I'll thunder punch this one because this one they might like swap in a different mon this turn as well. Oh, they're just staying in. Cool. Knock off the hands. Eight. This is still absolutely fine. Look at that damage right in that citrus range. Note that I did not want to take that recoil from Wild Charge. I wouldn't have gotten the KO anyways. All right, so I'm about to get freed from Encore. About. I think maybe one more turn. Oh, we're done. Cool. Nice. So we can do over protects. We can go for spores. They don't have U-turn, but there's nothing for them to do. So like, I'm actually going to spore that same slot and just go after the Politoed. And again, they're just not threatening the, the Amoongus off the board. Like this Rilla core, this uh, Urshi core, like I'm not at all threatened. Like while I could have went for a side Pollen Puff there. I, I don't think that would have been that, that important. I think I would have been a little bit deep, you know, because I think they should have just swapped the Rilla, but like, hey, you know. To each their own. All right, so Zard's on the board. So we still have our Terra, which means I'm going to do it here. Um, they have an Urshifu in the back. We have the Great Mons to pin Urshi. I think if we just go Terra here, uh, do I even need to do that? What are they going to do? They're going to Heat Wave? Hurricane? I'm just going to swap in my Torn. And I'm just going to let the hands die, I think. I'm going to swap in my Torn. And I'm actually going to Thunder Punch this Rilla because I think that the Rilla is going to go to Urshi. There it is right there. Oh my gosh. Professional Pokemon player. That's plus one. Back at it once again. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, yes. And I think Wild Charge would have gotten that KO, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm just going to set up a free Tailwind. And they have Rilla in the back. So we're just going to Ice Punch the Zard. It protects on cooldown. Either it stays in and gets put it within range for Aqua Jet, or they swap in Rilla and just die. Cool. Oh, we already know that doesn't KO, bro. We already know that doesn't KO. We got these Eevees. Heat wave, nice, nice. Takes out Torn, but Tailwind's up. And then Zard's going to get this. We get a crit Ice Punch and a freeze Ice Punch. Yo, Iron Hands with the Ice Punch coming in absolutely massive. Let's think about the actual best play here. Because they still haven't Terrid yet. I'm going to go Moongus. And I would say the actual straight up best play. I'm trying to think, what are you going to do? It might just be Pollen Puff their Rilla. Because, like, Hands is kind of not that great here. They're not going to Terra here. They're not going to fake out here. I'm going to Pollen Puff my... 
I'm gonna palm puff this damn Rilla. And I'm gonna try to get this art off the board. Yeah, absolutely. This is totally fine. You don't want to side palm puff there. You don't want to. You're just gonna get some damage. Shower Zone's frozen solid. We take those. Oh my gosh, Amoongus busted those those extra points. I'm kidding. I don't think we had any points in special attack. But yeah, now we just go Aqua Jet and finish off Palm Puff. Could they tear it here? Hmm. Would Aqua Jet KO there? That's actually a really good question. I'm curious about that. I could also click Rage Powder. This is just a, a weird way to look at the game, you know? Let me think. I think that we can actually take the Rilla out. Let's try it. I just want to see. I want to see if this KOs. No, wait. The right, the right play is actually like Spore Detect. Water Terra Zard, yo. They're on top of it. Cool. Let me do the right play. Oh, I clicked Spore, though. I thought I clicked Palm Puff. Oh, my God. Literally misplays. Literally misplays out here. Misplays for days out here. Wow. 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 Okay. Hmm, I think that Aqua Jet still KOs that guy, though. We know that uh, Palm Puff does, though. So, like, I actually think that we can do this and be fine. 23A, it's fine. Got some free damage. Grassy Guy's going to do a ton. We're not dead yet. Does Zard wake up? Zard, sorry, Zard don't freeze. It does not. I, I can't believe I clicked. I thought I clicked Palm Puff. I really did. I really, really thought I clicked Palm Puff because we still had Tailwind up. Um, and then we just win. Oh, my gosh. Still. It's, uh, it's all... Shoot some ladders out here. That'll yeah, still get the KO anyways. So I try to protect. Didn't matter. We're Urshi. Cool. So we'll take those wins. Not not the not the Queen's games. Not the Queen's games at all. But we did win 2-0. Uh, pretty convincingly. We used Amoongus correctly. We used Hands correctly. I think all the sets that we wanted to use, we used correctly. And remember what we said. We didn't want to lose the Torn Urshi. We did not lose the Torn Urshi, even like a little bit. All the little subtle changes we made to this team uh, over the course of building it definitely did help. So that being said, what we're going to do now is take a look at the flow charting for the team, right? We ha we know we want a good matchup for Slime of Heatran. We know we want to lose, uh, not lose the Torn Urshi, and we know we want a team that's easy to play. So from here, we're going to go break down our S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier leads and talk about what we want to do in like games one, two, and three. This is the part that I think most people don't do when they do team building. They don't flow chart and understand every one of their lead options, and there are 15 different lead options. Options. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to break it down. You can do this in your own games. Let me just make sure this was oh, it's the end of the match. Um, in your own games or in your own teams, you can break down and go hands Amoongus, hands Urshi, hands Torn, hands Arcanine, hands Shempao, next Mon, Amoongus Urshi, Amoongus Torn, Amoongus Arcanine, Amoongus Shempao. You can break these all down, right? So we want to go look at hands, um, hands Amoongus first, right? So Hands of Mungus, where would I put that? What is the good things Hands of Mungus is good against? I would say, again, it's really, really good into Torn Urshi. Uh, it's a very chonky lead. Yes, it doesn't have Faker, but it's good into Lando. It can bait Heatran correctly. Is that an S tier lead? I wouldn't say it's S tier. The A tier and B tier leads aren't even necessarily wrong or worse. They're just matchup specific. So I would put Hands of Mungus here. And I would put uh, good verse... Um, Torn, Urshi. All right, it's pretty pretty simple. The next one we we'll take a look at is Iron Hands Urshifu. Now we do not have Fake Out on this hand, so we're not going to be as big of a bully. I would say that is another A tier lead. And I would say it doesn't have as much pressure. I, I would say it's weak to flutter. Otherwise is solid. So in this situation, you probably want to be pivoting in Arcanine or Amoongus. And so understanding that this is the things you need to do once you do these leads and understanding what they're weak against, understanding what they're good against, and having an actual flow chart and a plan for what to cover up for their weaknesses are, you know, it's going to be, that's the key. That's the key that like most people don't do. So no, you need Arcanine in the back. Arc, Amoong, in back. There you go. Next one is going to be uh, Iron Hands Tornadus. Um, Iron Hands Tornadus is fine. Um, it's not that it's necessarily wrong. I would say it's another A tier lead. And the only reason why it's going to be here is because it's passive. We're not getting any big KOs the first turn. We're kind of seeing what they're doing, seeing what their weeds are. We're soaking Intimidates and being able to pivot into the Mons that we need for the situation while getting up speed control with our Tornadus if we need it. So 
like I would go for this in like a game one situation um, just to be able to see kind of how my opponent handles my team on paper. Because even if they did lead something like Tornershi, cool, we just pivot in our Amoongus. Uh, if they lead something like Lando, like cool, we can Ice Punch, we can pivot our Shen still get that KO through the Intimidate. We still have a lot of options, but um, from there, we're, we're basically letting our opponent show their cards before trying to punish them. And then Iron Hands Arcanine. I like this lead. I'm going to put this in S. And the reason I like this is because Arcanine helps you really cover up for a lot of the bad matchups Iron Hands might have. It's good in the Iron Hands mirror. I'm just going to call this one Good Stuffs. Because, like, you get an Intimidate, you have the ability to pivot in Mons like Tornadoes. They can cover Arcanine's weaknesses, pivot in your Amoongus, pivot in your Urshifu, get a KO on their Flutter. They're not going to be just all inning you on turn one when you have an Arcanine. That's the reason why Arcanine's good. It disincentivizes those turn ones uh, where they just double into you and roll you over. Arcanine's really hard to do that to. Um, you also have, they have to respect the e-speeds. There's so many things on paper that are really good about that. And then like also against like redirection leads, like you can just pop their Amoongus. So in the mirror matchup against like Amoongus, you can just Flare Blitz, delete their Amoongus and have your hands actually hit the thing the Amoongus is trying to hit. So it's really, really good. Um, I think the higher level player you play against, the more you're going to start using the Iron Hands Arcanine lead. And then last but not least, uh, Iron Hands Shen Pao. Um, I would say that this is definitely in the A. And the reason being is you usually want to pivot in Xian Pao. Like that's, you want to pivot in the Xian Pao to activate the Sword of Ruin and make hands get a KO it wouldn't normally have. Leading this way, uh, it's weak to intimidate. Cause like a Scarf Lando still bullies you. Arcanine still bullies you. So like, I think that this leads good Right, but like it's it's a net tempo loss because you're just soaking a double intimidate for no reason. Uh, the only thing that could good that could come out of this is like leading Shen Pao, protecting with Shen Pao, getting some free damage with hands, and then swapping to a Mungus, then swapping else to something like Arcanine to mitigate that damage. But that being said, it's still a solid lead, and it's gonna let you do what you want to get done every single time. You can also remove terrain if they have like a terrain team, like against like against like Psy Spam. This might be a pretty decent lead because you can ice spinner away their terrain and just have hands hit something. And if they can't, if they don't have their terrain, they can't really break your Iron Hands, especially if you go Fire Terra. That's the reason why we have Fire Terra for that matchup. So those are all the matchups with Iron Hands. Iron Hands is a pretty good bond. It's going to be used in most of your games, and it's a great lead. Um, Amoongus Urshifu. I love this lead. Um, Amoongus uh, Urshifu, I'd actually put in S. All right, so the reason this is good is um, Urshifu is going to be able to punish them for protecting and switching, right? So they just have to fight. So if they have to fight, if they have to fight... we trade and spore, right? So what's gonna happen is they're gonna hit us or we're gonna hit them. One for one's gonna happen and then something's gonna get spored. So even at a net loss where you go like 0 for one, um, you still spore the other one, which means when you bring out your hands, when you bring out your Arcanine, when you bring out your Shimpao, now you have a situation where you already took out one of their Mons, preferably the one that was the biggest threat. You spored the other one and now they have to fight a 1v1 versus Sash Shimpao. You still have your Amoongus, by the way. They have to fight a 1v1 versus your Iron Hands. Uh, we still have Amoongus, by the way. They can, like, palm puff our hands and do a bunch of other stuff and still spore you, right? So I think this is a very, very good position to put ourselves in. And, again, maybe they just... Maybe we went Rage Powder and they killed Amoongus and then, like, Urshifu took out their other Mon. Like, that's completely fine. Like, let's say they would like, a Sui and Arcanine and you Rage Powder and they Flare Blitz and you kill their Arcanine. Well, now their Arcanine's not here, which means Shen Pao can do whatever it wants, our Arcanine can do whatever it wants, our hands can do whatever it wants, and we just send out Torn mid-game Tailwind, game over, easy people going to squeeze. It's going to be a free win in game two a lot of the time. Very, very, very solid lead. Uh, I, do, I do this one all the time. Amoongus is, redirection is good. Amoongus is good. People don't respect it enough. Amoongus Torn. Eh. That's a B tier lead. Right? This is probably the first, maybe the only B tier lead this team has. It's not even that it's too passive. It's that it like... Literally... Literally... <laughs> can't do anything. Um... The best thing this team has is if you need tail wind, this gets it up, right? So for example, like let's say they have a board that is priority spam, but not necessarily like let's say let's say for example, 
you're fighting against sand. And they have a cell rock banded lichen rock. You can rage powder away that uh, a cell rock because uh, rage powder is a plus two priority. Um, and you can get around the plus one priority and then get up your tailwind and then Amoongus takes some damage, that's fine. Even if you lose your torn, you needed tailwind to get that matchup. So like, you see how that that weird situation, maybe against like other torn Urshis where they have like a choice band, aqua jet, like all in, or maybe they have like a double priority move with like ice shard, aqua jet. So against those normal priority moves, this is gonna let you redirect those and get up your tailwind so you can just win with your Arcanine, win with your Shimpao, win with your Urshi in the back. Um, against extreme speed, you still can't redirect that with Amoongus, so not as good. Maybe you can go for like Protect Baits as well, like Protect, make them double into Torn and Spore something. So there are options, like it's still viable and it's worth it to actually go through this exercise to see if it's something that you want to be doing in your own games. But knowing is is power, there are a bunch of other better leads, but this one still could, could work in like a late game best of three setting. Uh, we have a Moongus Arcanine. I like this. Um, I'm going to put it in... I'm actually going to put it in S. Um, very similar to Urshi. Um, same as above, right? We have, like, the exact same issue. Now we have an Intimidate, right? So there's... there's these also aren't going to be ordered in their own tiers. There's just S tiers, A tiers, B tiers, C tiers. Um... Same as above, we can trade with something, we can intimidate something, and then we spore the other one, and then we just bring out our real mon and just win the game. Very, very solid. Um, Amoongus Shempao. I'm gonna put this in A. And the reason why it's in A, first of all, it's very exposed. But, um, and you, you can redirect, you do know, the same sort of things. Uh, Shimpa's a little bit more susceptible to getting, like, gimped by things. You know, you probably have to protect. They're probably going to lead fake outs with something. So you probably either have to double protect or swap. Um, and so what I, the biggest thing I like about this lead is protect baits. Right? So you don't know who's protecting. Shimpa or Amoongus, are you going to be being spored or are you going to be being killed? They have to go into 50-50s. You can even go for the double protect to scout what they're doing and then swap out and punish accordingly if you decide to do so. So this is like a 50-50... 50-50 city over here. And it's just, okay. It's an HL lead. I would say this could sometimes be a good game three lead if you know exactly what your opponents are trying to do. Uh, against Trick Room, this is going to be good too because you can go for Ice Spinners into those Indities. Spore the Indities next turn even if they got their tr Trick Room. If they don't have a Grass Terra on their Armors, you just spore that slot as well. Easy peasy, Lemon Squeezy. Um, so think about that. Um, we're into Urshifu. So Urshitorn, Esther lead, obviously. So we got Torn Urshi because it's just uh, Tail Wind plus Surging Strikes. Solid. Nothing wrong with it. Solid team. Uh, just kill everything. Can't protect. Solid damage. Like, it's everything you need. Uh, Urshi Arcanine. Put that to S as well. Uh, damage. That's it. Like, this is the damage. If your opponent plays passive for like one sec, they're dead. And if they don't play passive, they play like aggressive, cool. Well, like you, they don't know where you're swapping into moves. They don't know when you're going to dial it back. You have a lot of priority here too. I really, really like this. Tons of damage. I would say any team that you want to be using as like a competitive level needs at least three to four S tier weeds. This team has a lot of them where you can go these in almost any situation and still come out on top. Um, we see uh, Urshi Shempao. Um, I'll, I'll put that up here as well. Uh, it's just so good, right? Being You can only fake out one. You can only really incapacitate one of these guys. And if they want to go passive and double protect and then next turn punish uh, whatever slot played passively, it's too much damage. There's a lot of priority. It's very similar. Uh, uh, damage 2.0, right? <laughs> um, it's just more damage. And you can swap in the Amoongus to slow down the game if you want. You can bring your turn in the back to regain tempo if you lose one of your mons. You're basically going to be trading, and if you're trading correctly, uh, you're going to be doing a lot of damage. Uh, you're still also going to be able to mitigate a lot of, like, Intimidates because, like, Shempao cuts that uh, defense on your opponent's mons. So it's, it is a lot of damage. I think it's still really, really good. There are things that have good matchups against it. I'd say Iron Hands is probably pretty good against this, but all you got to do is protect with one, swap in your Amoongus, and Hands is uh, useless. So you're good to go. After that, you have Tornadus Arcanine. I really, really like this lead. This is the lead that I think most people don't really see coming. This is a well-disguised lead. They're like, yo, I can beat Torn Urshi. I have Amoongus. And it's like, yeah, but like Torn Arcanine is what I'm really doing. This is what we're going to do in most games, actually, in game one. You go Torn Arcanine. You go Tailwind, dead. Yeah, you're going to lose one of your mons, probably. You're going to kill one, but you're going to lose one of your mons. Bring your Urshi. Now you have like Arcanine Urshi or Torn Urshi, and you go dead, dead, right? And then now they have one mon, you have three. You win the game. Or... 
you know, they kill the Arcanine, and you bring out your Urshi, and you have a Shimp on the back. So you just, like, Tailwind into dead, dead, dead. All their mons are gone. Um, so. And maybe thinking, like, well, that's a, what if they just fake out you? It's like, cool, we have, we have Ghost Terra Torn. We have uh, priority E-Speed on Arcanine. Like, we, we should be fine. And we have, this comes packed with an Intimidate. So we don't just get, like, rolled by physical attackers back. It's really, really solid. Um, I would heavily, I would heavily, you know, try this one if I were you. I think it's a really, really solid team. And uh, last but not, well, not least yet. We have Torn Shempow. Eh, I'm going to put that in the A tier. Too exposed for me. You're basically going to be losing a Mon to gain tempo. You probably, you basically have to go like protect Shempow Tailwind or even like a double protect into fodder one of those guys Tailwind if you're playing around Fake Out. And then from there, you can bring out your Mons like Urshi uh, Arcanine, but it's a net tempo loss. It's still good, but it's a net tempo loss. Um, it's just my opinion. If you can play against like uh, Terrains and stuff like that, you can find like, let's say they would like into the Armor Rouge. If you call it right, you can go like Ice Spinner 1 and like taunt the other one and play around that a little bit, but... Because uh, uh, you can play around the uh, side terrain if you get rid of the terrain first, but uh, I don't. I'm not really a big fan of this one. There's some matchups where, like, if they like, this is great against Landorus if their teammates don't have fake out, but like they totally will. They're, they'll lead Rilla there. They'll lead hands there. So uh, it's not the greatest, but like you will be able to go into a safe mid game like this because Shempao exposed. It takes a lot of respect to deal with Shempao, which means your Torn should be able to get his tailwind off relatively free. And now the last but not least, Shempao Arcanine. I like this. I'm gonna put in this. Um, and I would say that this lead is good because of its uh, priority spam. So, like, your opponent can totally have, like, Specs Flutter or, like, Chi Yu Flutter or, like, another Arcanine or something like that. And we're like, bro, you're done. Like, E Speed, Normal Terra, you're dead. Um, this is good against Shen Pao Arcanine. You're just going to match their aggression and say like i'm in and this is also like really really good against teams that are like speed control city because like if i'm leading like this and you have like torn urshi i can just like gimp your urshi off the board on turn one which is like amazing um and you're intimidated and like yeah you got have a tailwind but it's like cool i can ignore that tornado forever and just like every single turn double into the tornado's teammate and probably still win the game so in the, it's like in like a race to the finish hyper aggression match mirror match this is a really really solid lead this is a good one for game three this is also the one that you want to go with in sudden if I can type, because you have a Sashmon, you have Intimidate, you're very bulky, but you're also threatening to double up into every single slot, every single turn. This is going to force Protects, this is going to force Pivots to mitigate damage, and that's what you want in a Sudden Death game, which is the first person of one KO. So if you ever get put in a Sudden Death game, that's probably the lead that you go. So those are all of our leads. I will say that this is a really, really good exercise that everyone should be doing if they want to get a better understanding of their teams. Even if you can't like break things down to this level, say, well, this is good. I know this is good against this. And I know this is bad against this. And if I know that this is bad against this, what could I possibly do? Like force yourself to think a way out of it, to think about what mons you need to bring in the back to better, you know, stabilize the situation. Guys, I want to say thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you at all got to the end or if you at all like this and you want to see more team building guides like this in the future please let me know we're going through a rough patch on youtube youtube always like around this time of year is just like really really funky with like views and stuff like that so any likes any reactions any shares with on this video they greatly help me out so that's all i got for this one um thank you guys so much for watching again hopefully you enjoyed it and other than that peace out i'll see you guys next time